Uh, like everyone else, I'd like to thank everyone that's come and um, thank my fellow students, faculty, and everyone that made Kepler uh, possible. Um, I'm going to just tell quickly my little personal story, and hopefully it will serve as a metaphor in your own journey of reaching for your dreams. So, uh, I'm an Indian Vedic astrologer, Indian astrologer, a dense harness. I didn't actually see where he was sitting. It actually started me on my journey when I, many years ago, got a reading from him and decided I wanted to pursue this. Um, but it was in 2002 at that UAC that I first heard about Kepler. I have a bachelor's degree, but I heard they had this new MA. And Kathy Coleman, the then president, talked to me, and Dennis talked to me. We think it'd be a good fit for this. My bachelor's degree backgrounds and stuff that would fit with a master's in uh, the history of astrology. And you know, I thought about it, and unfortunately at that time, the master's degree temporarily went away. Um, and then in the meantime, uh, Kepler started, some Kepler students started traveling internationally. And it was Kepler goes to Greece, Kepler goes to Stonehenge, and uh, <laughs> I got on these trips. I became a friend of Kepler. You know, they, they really monitored who could come on, but because I knew Dennis, he could vouch for me. And that's how I met Demetra. But, the first graduating class of Kepler were called the Lobsters. Every class I had heard picked some sort of sea creature. Me and Bernard and whoever else. Oh, Wonder were part of the Trident class. And Andy, yes. Um, but it was the Lobsters, and I really grilled them. It was Kepler goes to Greece, and I was grilling them the whole time. You know, how much time did it take to study? What would it take? You know, I'm trying to figure out, can I really make this manifest in my life? And it was on a beach in Samos, Greece, the birthplace of Pythagoras, or who we call Pythagoras, in the middle of the night, full moon night, where talking to several people, and Myra, you're on the beach, there even, yeah, I think Myra was one of them, and other lobsters, and I made the decision that yes, I'm going to go to Kepler. Um, I then had to meet with Lee, of course, later, and discuss my prerequisites, because I didn't want to go to school forever. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm talking to her about my background as a professional uh, Indian astrologer, and also my uh, undergraduate stuff. We worked out that I could get it done in three years, because I told myself six and a half years ago that if it took, <laughs> if it took more than three years, I wasn't interested. So I start Kepler, and, uh, and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe this was affirmative action, so I'm like the token Indian astrologer. Uh, <laughs> and you'd think with such a great omen of the full moon on Samos, I'd like to be this great student, and I started really good. Uh, Kepler has an interesting grading system. It was pass-fail. There was pass with distinction, pass, fail, fail miserably, and you are dead to us. <laughs> and I was really good. That first class, that one-on-one, -on -one, that history, I ate that up, I turned in everything on time, and something happened called life, and I suddenly became one of these people that fell behind, fell behind, and um, I think I'm almost the worst student. Just because I'm standing up here representing the masters, it's not because I like, did the best by any means. Um, it was a challenge. It was very hard. It, I was ready to let go of it many times, and I had the support of some very strong friends. Um, that, and it was actually holding on to the vision of this moment, speaking to you from here, seeing that as a reality wow. that kept me going. what I gained, and hopefully, metaphorically, I'm speaking for the, the bunch of us master students as I kind of uh, go through the planets and pick keywords east and west. Um, I think for the sun, what we gained was a status that's going to be very rare now. Uh, there are going to be very few. There's a certain fame and status being bestowed upon us as master students of Kepler College. It's 
uh, this blip that happened, it's this interesting thing that happened in history, and we have that. We made the journey and we made it to the end. A lot of people didn't. You know, a lot of people, life took them off. Um, for the moon, uh, it created a real sense of family um, and a tolerance for, you know how you can have your weird family members, but because they're family, <laughs> you get along. <laughs> you know, and in my class, I had, you know, Russian immigrant, a bishop, <laughs> Andy, who I thought was a boy. <laughs> And this, uh, you know, there were psychological astrologers, there were all different kinds of astrologers. In fact, one of the first personal debates, you were forced to do big debates, I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, one of the first um, personal debates, I was with a psychological astrologer who was like, you know, how can you possibly make predictions, you know, as an Indian astrologer, you're taking away people's free will. It was nice, you know, this was, uh, we've kind of lost this as a culture to be able to disagree philosophically and then be friends after the discussion. You know, this is a, yeah, that's something we need to regain, particularly in the political sphere. For Mars, as a graduate student, you really had to stand up and present your arguments, and, and actually all the students at Kepler were required to do these debates, of which, uh, yeah, I would, I would always somehow be on the losing team, although <laughs> Bernard did give us the winning vote. Uh, the one winning one vote to win uh, at my first one. It wasn't until the last debate that I finally realized how the game was played and we won. <laughs> but that's what it is. You have to, you know, especially as a um, graduate student, and that brings me to Mercury, uh, which rules students. Um, being a graduate student is different than being a bachelor student. There you're learning things and you're just learning and retaining. With a master's, you're pushing the boundaries a little bit. Uh, of what is known and kind of challenging and finding a unique angle um, and certainly Kepler inspired us to do all of that. Um, we also had a very diverse, I mean, I kind of mentioned this before, but just in terms of careers that were in the op in, at the school, you had all people from all walks of life represented from bail, bonds, woman, <laughs> um, psychic, <laughs> religious leader, you know, it was quite a bunch of us. Jupiter, respect for higher knowledge. Obviously, that's what the whole Kepler experience is about. Um, one of the things you learn is that astrology is intimately involved in all of history. Almost any history you took in college had the astrology taken out of it, you know? Roman leaders didn't make a decision, typically, without astrologers. I mean, it was dialed into the culture. Um, but it gets sanitized in, in mainstream education. That's changing slowly, but it's there. And you learn that tr astrology transcends every culture. I'll just leave you with that. Um, one of the unusual keywords for Venus is purity, and I'm going to say that the excellence that was required of us as, as students is something that I gained from Kepler. Gained from having to rewrite less than perfect things over and over again in some cases. And even though I'm a traditional Indian astrology, I'm going to use the outer planets out of respect for many of my peers. Uh, we already talked about Uranus, that just happened a few moments ago. Um, Pluto, which Michael Luton I once heard called the butterfly planet because you go from a caterpillar into a butterfly. Of course, you're terrified as hell if you're decomposing in the uh, cocoon, but Kepler does transform you. Six and a half years ago, I didn't need reading glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I had no gray hair, and I was married. <laughs>
Rip, just take that home. You take nothing home. That persistence can get you where you need to go. And one other thing, which I'll link to Neptune, one of my favorite writers, J. Michael Straczynski, wrote, never surrender dreams. Wow.